Today is April 29th in the year 2018. I'm Jermaine Hatton. This is my book review series, and we're looking at To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Undoubtedly, To Kill a Mockingbird is Harper Lee's most successful book. To Kill a Mockingbird talks about it being a sin. To Kill a Mockingbird, we will have an understanding of what it is that a mockingbird really symbolizes in this book as we go into the book. But we must understand from the get-go that it is a sin to kill a mockingbird. So says Atticus Finch, one of the characters in the book. Let's dive into it. So the grown-up Scout Finch recalls the story of To Kill a Mockingbird. So she is generally the narrator. So the book is really showing us how she has evolved from this innocent, naive, and amusing growing child to an, a tolerant adult and an accepting adult. And that has a lot to play with the way she was taught by not only her father, but also the housekeeper, her housekeeper, Carpunia, I think the name was. So Tom Robinson, the book surrounds Tom Robinson. And here we see that this Tom Robinson character is actually accused of raping Mayella uh, Yule, and Mayla Yule, she generally had a crush on Tom Robinson, but because he was black, the father, Bob Yule, realized that, you know what, no, nope, my daughter is not going to be with a black man. When, she, when he realized what was going on, he punished, he abused Mayla Yule, and she, in turn, had to shout or had to cry rape on Tom. And the society that they were in, even though the evidence pointed, even though the evidence clearly showed that Tom Robinson was innocent, he was still convicted for rape. He was convicted of rape. And that showed what a racist society it was because they couldn't afford him a fair trial, a decent trial. So Atticus Finch, the father of Scout Finch, was hired to defend Tom Robinson. And Tom Robinson generally was defended by a white man. So they call Atticus Finch a nigger lover. <laughs> That's what they refer to him. So Atticus represented the middle class in the book. And Bob Yule was actually the working class. He was a poorer man. So we see some amount of class action there. We see some amount of class fighting. So we see a fight between the two different classes. And here, coming down to the end of the book, you will get an understanding that this happens, or this story happened in a poor setup of a country, in this poor setup of Alabama, actually, during the Great Depression period. Let's move on. <coughs> so, to Kill a Mockingbird, we would understand why it's a sin to kill a mockingbird just now. But To Kill a Mockingbird was set in Makeup, Alabama, and it happened between the years of 1933 to 1935. Mind you, Rosa Parks didn't sat on that bus till December 1, 1955. So as I tell you, even though slavery was abolished, even though slavery was banned, there was still some amount of segregation in the U.S. when this book was written. So race was still a major issue in the U.S., all right? So the U.S. went through a Great Depression when the stock markets crashed in 1929. So the South, where Alabama is, um, experienced bankruptcy, and many persons suffered, persons such as the colored people as well as the white people. So you can see that amount of poverty there, and the poverty is seen when the legal fees of Atticus is actually paid with farming produce. So instead of paying with money, they pay in farming produce because they just can't afford anything better.
So at the time of the novel, we have an understanding that whites were somewhat, or whites thought they were superior and blacks were subordinate. Uh, so we see an ostracizing of blacks in the courtroom of the trial. So white people sit on one side, black people sit on one side. That was represented in the courtroom. And the colored people were not represented in the education system. So Calpurnia uh, didn't or she talked about her being the only person in her family to have an education. So we have an understanding of how the effects of slavery or the effects of the discrimination against black people happened in this book when we see, when we look at these things here. So we can see also that black people were not even in any form of remote posts. So they didn't hold any office, any important office to bring about change. And while we see that, we see that that is so because the complete jury was actually made up of white people. There was no black person. So common sense will tell us that in a racist society such as Makeup, Alabama, with a completely white jury trying a man, a black man, Tom Robinson, for Mayella Yule rape allegation, obviously he's going to be convinced of that rape. And so he was denied a fair trial. Now, you know, when there is a trial, you have to bid the jury or you have to vet the jury. And based on the vetting of the jury, you are likely to choose the juror who will be on your side, more or less. So he was not given that opportunity to get a fair trial because the juror was the juror was biased. The jurors, the jury, the entire jury was biased. It was white. So obviously, we cannot see a fair trial there. So we see a punishment as well for persons who like black people or people who. Uh, are against discrimination. For example, to, uh, Atticus. Atticus represented this guy. So we can see a picture here of this white guy representing this black man. So he was moving above his general prejudice, or he was moving above the stereotype of his native of his society to represent Tom Robinson. And re in representing Tom Robinson, he was discriminated. He was discriminated among, um, amongst his own white people. So, and we also see this guy, Dolphus Raymond, when he married a, a black woman, he was also discriminated. He was also uh, alienated by white persons. But mind you, uh, it wasn't just about white people discriminating, the blacks also did it. So when the, when uh, I think it was Scout, yes, it was Scout, when Scout visited um, Calpurnia's church, and Calpurnia is a person who uh, is a housekeeper of the Attica, of Atticus, when Scout visited the church, she was not accepted by a church member. So she was also discriminated. So it was only, it was not only the white folks who were discriminating, it was also the black persons discriminating against the white. So it was like a, a it was a back and forth something. And we also see in the play, the Ku Klux Klan, the KKK, and it was a white hate group for many persons who don't know. And they generally went about lynching people, um, burning them alive, uh, tying them to a cross and burn them. These are, are the truths of our society and it actually happened. So during the trial of Tom Robinson, this KKK group actually wanted to take matters into their own hands and punish Tom Robinson. Mind you, Tom was innocent. This uh, Mayela Yule, she actually liked Tom. She had a soft spot for him. <laughs> I could talk about a little about that and probably tell you why, but she liked the guy. But because the father found out, and the father is racist, and that's what I'm saying. Racism is a learned behavior. Now, this young lady happened to not be racist, but the father... His existence, his mere existence, is speaking racism. So what he did, he punished the girl, he beat her, whatever he, whatever it was, and 
as a result, to please her father, she screamed rape. And rape is not something we just happen to pick up like that. Females, do not do it. Unless it really happens, do not do it. You're making it bad for someone else. So, Tom was about to be killed by this hate group for an allegation that is false. Imagine that. Imagine you being prosecuted for an allegation that's false. Interesting, right? Remember, it's a sin to kill a mockingbird. We'll get an understanding of what I mean when I say it's a sin to kill a mockingbird. And Tom was a mockingbird. So, what happened coming down to the end? Atticus started us off with a definition of it being a sin to kill a mockingbird. He said it's a sin to kill a mockingbird. Miss Mahdi continued to make it easier for a scout to understand. And she said mockingbirds don't do one thing, but make music for us to enjoy. All they do is sing their hearts out for us. That's why it's a sin to kill a mockingbird. Now, I'm killing a mockingbird, or to kill a mockingbird is really a symbol. So what exactly is this mockingbird? The mockingbird is an individual who aims to not make your life bad, but to make it a pleasant one. So the mockingbird, you can take it to mean anybody who has a good nature or a good side. And when we attempt to hurt that person's good side, is killing that mockingbird. Let me try and rephrase that in another way for, to make you understand. Killing the good nature of someone is killing a mockingbird. So let's look at two examples of this mockingbird being killed. Tom Robinson. Tom Robinson was an individual who attempted to make the life of male Yule a good one. So on a daily basis, she would ask for him to help her with certain things around the house. And probably because she liked him, right? She liked the guy. But the father, the father, the racist Bob Hewell, would not have it. So when he discovered what was going on, he beat her, he dealt her a few blows, and she had to cry rape. Now, Tom Robinson was just trying to help the young lady. And here, they were, he, she was shouting rape at this innocent man. So the good nature, the good thing he was trying to do for her is now being punished with this allegation of rape. So again, that is a sign of killing that mockingbird, killing that individual who's trying to make your life a decent one. Boo Radley. Boo Radley is the first time I'm mentioning Boo Radley, but Boo Radley was the neighbor of Scout and Jem, uh, the Atticus children. Uh, they started by teasing Boo Radley. They, they, there's room, there are rumors about him uh, killing his father years ago. Well, he hasn't been seen, so nobody, he hasn't been seen for years, so nobody knows that he really exists. But Boo actually came to the rescue of Scout and Jim when they were being, when they were chased or they were going to be killed by Bob Ewell, by Bob Ewell, Bob Ewell, same person. So, uh, what happened? So when Atticus was going to defend Tom Robinson, one night, one day, whatever it was, uh, Bob got so upset. Bob Hugh got so upset that this white man is about to defend this black man. And he got he got drunk and he was about to kill the white man's children as revenge. Alright, so when he was about to kill this man, out when he was about to kill the children, out comes Boo Radley. And Boo Radley knife in hand kill Bob Hugh. So, they go on to say it would have been a sin to kill Bob, Bob Radley. Because why? Boo Radley, not Bob Radley. Boo Radley. It was going to be a sin to kill Boo Radley because Boo Radley was not doing anything to harm anyone. 
all he was trying to do was to protect his neighbors, to protect the innocent children of Atticus. So for them to punish or for them to put Buradley in prison for that crime, that would have been an example of killing the mockingbird, of killing the good quality or the good nature of someone. So that's, these characters are generally innocent and they're falsely accused and alienated by the societies in which they live, both of those individuals. So Tom was isolated because he was a black man, while Boo was isolated because he was poorly understood. So he kept to himself for all the years because he was poorly understood. Learning experiences. What do we learn? Some powerful learning experiences coming out of um, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. One of it is a scout learns to respect everyone despite their race or class. Now, at the start of this book, this young lady was very, very much racist. Uh, she invited one per and she was very rude. She invited one young man to come live with them at one, no, to come dine with them at some point, and she was surprised by the way he was eating. Now. Now, because she was somewhat better off than the young man was, she was shocked at the way he was eating. So she hadn't the understanding that people might have different experiences different to her. People might not be as fortunate as she was. And this was pointed out to her by the house help. Carpunia and Carpunia clearly made her to understand that you ought not to laugh at someone, you ought not to embarrass someone because they are not in your position nor are you in theirs. So the father gave her a good lesson. He said, Never for you to understand that person, the father told her, Atticus told her, for you to understand a person, you have to be able to climb into his skin and walk around in it. And that's beautiful. Now, what does that mean? He showed his children that it's going to be hard for them to understand a person's point unless they really are in that position of that person. When Scout was in the midst of the trial, in the midst of Tom Robinson's trial, and the father was defending Tom Robinson, Scout, his daughter, was teased and she was called names such as nigger lover and so on. So the father, when he was made aware of it, Atticus told her that you need to fight with your head and not your fist. So he told her to put her fist down and start fighting with her head. And so he generally was telling her to avoid physical battle and to fight with good sense and good rationale. Excellent learning experience. So another learning experience coming out here, Scout learns that people are not who they seem to be. So she had a crazy understanding of Boo Radley. And there at the end, it was the Boo Radley, the same character Boo Radley, that saved her. Remember, this same Boo Radley was a person who was leaving some snacks, some sweets and so on, in the nut hole. And he was trying to be nice. So. Uh, again, they didn't pick up on that signal there, but Boo Radley is a nice guy, so even though the rumors were that he killed his father or that he was evil and so on, it's the same Boo Radley that came to their help when Bob Yule tried to kill them. So he, they learned or she learned that he was really a kind, gentle, private and brave individual. And and importantly, Scout learns from her father. And that's a brilliant lesson because it's not easy for a white man to represent a black man in a racist society. So she learns very much courage from her father. She learns how to treat people from her father. So the father in a racist tongue opted to represent a black man because he was innocent.
And even though he proved all of this, even though he showed that this man is innocent, the man was still convicted. What does that tell us? Hmm. It tells us that the society that they were living in was a racist one. When the jurors were all white, obviously no justice will be served there. But they took a little while to they took a little while to get to the verdict. So what does that tell us? It tells us that there might have been persons on that panel that thought the guy was indeed innocent. And in other words, it tells us that somebody there was able to see the truth for what the truth was. So the society, even though it's moving away slowly from racism, they were still, though, a, a larger force affecting society, which was indeed racism. So let me rephrase what I'm saying here in case you don't understand. Make it easier for you. I am saying that the simple fact that Tom Robinson was convinced for or convicted of rape, even though he was innocent, tells us that the society was a really a racist one. They took a while though to hand down the verdict of guilty. It tells us that the society might be willing, or people in the society might be willing to move away from being racist and to see the truth for what the truth is. But the overall picture is that he was convicted of rape. So it shows that the persons who might be level-headed in the society are still not given the chance that they deserve. So what do I mean by that? In other words, the racist individuals are still powerful and they are more powerful than individuals who might want to be level-headed. Irony is a good device here. We have a few examples. It was ironic that the Miss Caroline, the school teacher, wanted Scout to stop reading when she's home. Many teachers would be glad when their students are reading at home, but she claims that the father teaching her to read is screwing things up. <laughs> so she didn't want uh, Scout to, teach, to learn to read when she was at home. She wanted to do it in school. So that was an irony. It's also ironic that Miss Gates, Miss Gates was actually one of the persons who were teaching at the school, and she was ironic that she felt passionate about Hitler or felt passionate against Hitler. She wanted, um, she was against, she was against the way Hitler treated people in Germany. And yet she, in her society, was hostile against black people. That's hypocrisy, huh? So what does that mean? It means that she was against Hitler. She was she didn't like what Hitler was doing in Germany or treating people in, in Germany, but yet she was racist towards black people in her own society. It doesn't get more hypocritical than that. It's also ironic, uh, but not surprising, that a black man was convicted to rape, even though all the evidence showed that the man was innocent. So Tom Robinson was convicted of rape, even though the evidence showed that he was innocent. That is ironic, but not surprising. Foreshadowing. It was foreshadowed when the book on page 9 says, I maintain. The Yules started it all, but Jem was four years my senior, said that it started long before that. What are they talking about here? They're talking about that racism. They're talking about the racism. Scout is saying that she thinks the UL, the Ewells or the Yules started it all. But Jem, who was four years older than her, was saying, no, racism scouts started long before this. It wasn't really the EULs but the, or the EULs. The EULs or the EULs were just persons being used to represent a racist society. There are some wonderful teaching experiences in this book, To Kill a Mockingbird. One of them is seen in Miss Maudie's chapter five, 
uh, explanation of things to Scout and Jam. She says, sometimes the Bible in the hand of one man is worse than the whiskey bottle in the hand of another. So we know when someone is drunk with a whiskey bottle, they can cause harm. Now, Miss Mardi is saying that having a Bible in your hand equates to being drunk or being or is actually worse than being drunk with a whiskey with whiskey so what is she saying she's saying that people use the bible to criticize to condemn and to punish others wrong and they claim that it's right by the bible so people again i, I had a series once when i talked about people worshiping religion yeah they're using the bible conveniently to them and Miss Mahdi is saying the Bible in the hand of one man is worse than the whiskey bottle in the hand of another. Meaning that people are often push the ideas, the idea of the Bible as a bad thing, but they do not learn the real value, the real message behind the Bible. So she's saying that we get so busy living in this world that we forget to prepare for the next. Or the other way around. She might just well be saying that we prepare for the next world, but we forget to live in this world we're in. All right. So let's actually have an understanding before we leave. Some themes are well, you can figure out some themes. I just want to talk about this one thing is that uh, the guy Jem is crippled, and the crippled. This crippled nature tells us just how broken or how backward the justice system is in uh, makeup. So the broken, the crippleness is actually a symbol of the broken justice system that convicts Tom Robinson of rape, even though he was innocent. Goodbye. Take care.